Okay, let's finish up section 12.3 by finding confidence intervals for the y-intercept and slope. So the table that I'm going to show you on the next slide displays information regarding advertising through Facebook for various industries. The first variable is click-through rate, or CTR, or how often someone viewing a Facebook, Facebook ad clicks on the ad. Just don't do it. They'll give you more ads like that. The second variable is the cost per click, or CPC, or the cost of advertising on Facebook for each click from a potential customer. Thus, for the apparel industry, which you'll see on the next page, 1.24% of viewers click through to view more information at a cost of 45 cents per click. In contrast, for finance and insurance, only 0.56% of viewers click, which raises the cost to 377. And we're going to create a 95% confidence interval for both the slope and the y-intercept. So again, here are the values that they were talking about. And we were looking at finance and insurance versus apparel. So we have the click-through rate and the cost per click. And those were the values that they were talking about on the last page. So using this, we want to now create a confidence interval for the slope of the regression line equation and the y-intercept of the regression line equation. All right, let's take a look at how I can have Excel do all of this hard work for me. So I'm going to go to data. And again, all of this data is in your chapter 12 data spreadsheet. Data, data analysis, and regression. And I'm going to choose for the Y range, I'm going to choose all of the Y values, which is going to be the cost per click. And then I'm for X range, I'm going to choose all of the X's, which is the click through rate. And I just need the 95% confidence interval because uh, sigma is 0.05. I don't need the residuals. I really just need to click that confidence level. And then output range is just going to tell Excel where to start the data. And then I click OK. So things that we need to know from this page. This guy is my R, my Pearson correlation coefficient, but it's actually the absolute value of it. Um, so it would not tell me if it is positive or negative, um, but obviously the slope will tell me that, so it's really not that important. Here's the R squared value, which is the correlation, oh, sorry, the coefficient of determination. Here is the standard error, which is the same standard error that we just worked somewhat hard to find in our last video. And then we're going to look at the intersection of the residual row and the SS column right here. That value is the sum of squares error, so SSE, which again, we can use. We could use it on our last video as well, but we would still have to do all of that work to find the um, margin of error. And then we're going to look for the lower 95 and upper 95. I'm gonna slide over just a little bit. The lower 95 and upper 95 values for the confidence interval for y-intercept and for the slope, which is just called x variable. And then of course, there's also the coefficients and these coefficients are the two that would create our regression equation. So I would say that y hat is equal to 3.672 minus 195.4. That negative would indicate that the actual correlation coefficient is negative. So again, this is just a quick screen grab of that same information. What do I need if I'm looking at the row, I'm sorry, looking for the intercept? So again, the last two values of the intercept row, which are right here, give me the expected values for the intercept of my regression equation. So the 95% confidence interval for the B sub zero, which is the intercept, is written as 2.536 to 4.809. Using that same process, but this time for the slope, I'm looking here at these two values, and that gives me the 95% confidence interval for the slope. So again, that tells us the range of values which we believe the actual slope falls between. So negative th three, 11.544 to negative 79.256.
Up next is our very last section of applied statistics, which is multiple regression, section 12.4.